Maybe one of the most frustrating things to any writer is that the act of writing is really complex. And when you sit down and you even start writing a first draft, the mountain you're trying to climb seems enormous. It seems huge. It seems insurmountable. But I think that we all need to remember that you climb a mountain step by step. Welcome to How to Write Good. I am your host, Daniel Poppy. You can find out more about me at danielpoppy.com. If it is your first time here, How to Write Good is a writing podcast that seeks to find principles and advice that can be applied across a broad range of writing situations. If you've been here before, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button below, and share. So you climb a mountain step by step, but you also do something else that is in steps, all right? Uh, We're gonna be talking about how you should work in layers when you write. I think this is something that is extremely practical when you write because most people who read a book see the book as one big cohesive thing. And there are writers, uh, I think I've gotten to a point where most of my writing is done in one go. There are writers who are able to write well enough who can write a book in one cohesive unit. You know, you write a first draft and it's essentially done. It needs some polishing. I think there are writers out there who can do that. Um, Stephen King is probably one of those writers because he writes so quickly. He also has a lot of time to write as well. But we're going to be talking about how to write in layers and how it is done. But I just want to... um, give you a picture of something else that is done in layers because I talked about this idea in the past how if you if you work on marble you know you're you're making a marble statue the statue doesn't happen instantaneously it goes through a rough draft it gets more and more features it gets more and more detailed as you go on you polish it up it gleams etc and you get to the end where you have a, a statue that looks like it is real besides the fact that it is frozen in one place There are statues like that. If you go to any art museum, you're bound to see them. But if you've ever seen somebody paint, I think this is a good analogy as well. So when somebody paints, they aren't painting the entire piece all at once. They paint the background first. Uh, They paint they paint everything in the background and they work their way up and then they they oftentimes paint the darker things first and then add highlights later and if you're a painter I might be getting some of that wrong but that's essentially the gist of what's going on they're painting in layers they're painting from the back to the front or they're painting from the dark to the light whatever it is it's a really cool process because things don't happen all at once right if you want a sky that is green for whatever reason, you actually have to, you probably have to make the whole entire background green and then you paint over the bottom with your, um, you paint over the bottom with your grass or whatever's on the bottom, then you add your trees and you add the most important things last, which are probably the people in that painting. The same principle can be applied, the same idea can be applied to the writing process as well and it can be really useful to help you climb the mountain of writing okay uh, especially if you're writing a book most of the time I think people see think it's really daunting to be honest writing a book isn't it isn't as hard as you think it is it's more of a mental game and I think it's similar to a marathon a marathon isn't as hard as you think it is you can train you need to train probably most people probably need to train you do need to know stuff about writing you do need to have a certain level of writing skill it doesn't need to be very high to write a book so don't worry you do need to have a certain level of writing skill to write and finish a book but you can write a book it just takes you perseverance it's a different type of mental toughness right but if you uh if you break writing down into layers it's going to make the writing process easier you might have to start with that first draft you're actually going to have to start with that first draft that's your background that is not supposed to be something complete there's a lot of writers there's many writers and I agree with this who think that the first draft should be bad and maybe you should try to have fun with that first draft maybe you should try to do weird things with that first draft you shouldn't worry about how you write with that first draft because what you're trying to do is just trying to get the book completed and if you've never written a book before that is going to be a task that is hard because you've never done it before. That's 
that's pretty much what I think. If you haven't done it before, it's going to be hard because you haven't done it before. And then you're going to suddenly be like, oh, I finished this. I can do this again. I know the process. I know how it's going to work. Um, so the first draft in writing, it's a little different because with writing, when you're writing the first draft, you're actually creating the clay you're using to form everything else, if that makes sense. All right. So I'm going to back up a little bit. So this is kind of how I break down the different layers of what it is to write. I would say planning is a type of layer. And if you don't know, many people who are working with ceramics, many people who are um, working in are painting, oftentimes, probably always, in most cases, they are going to be drawing something out, whether that's on the canvas, whether that's on a little piece of paper, they are drawing something to get the concept within their head. So don't think that everybody's just painting all the time. I know people who do art, uh, like painting, different things like that, and they draw out the basic figure of what they're going to do so they can get the proportions right, so they can get the basic idea of how they want everything set up on the canvas correct, and then they start to put the paint to the canvas. So you, if you're doing any planning, which I think you should do at least some planning when you write a book, if you're doing any planning, that is what you're doing. You're, you're not saying that you're going to leave the book as a plan. The plan isn't going to dictate every choice you make as you write the book in the same way that that tracing, that outline doesn't dictate every choice the painter makes, right? It's just something to help you along. It's something to help you know where you're going and then you can have it in your mind as you work. Then you get to the first draft as I was talking about. And then after you get to the first draft, this is where you really can work in layers. This is where the idea of working in layers really comes out. You can break for as many different pieces there are to a book, you can break it down. You could break it down to every single paragraph, right? Which I oftentimes encourage. Break it down to every single paragraph, work on one paragraph at a time. You could break it down to every single chapter and work on it in that way. Or you can break it down more conceptually. You can say, huh, let's look at the plot. Let's make sure the plot actually flows. And then you can say, huh, do the characters make sense? Do they seem real? Is their dialogue good, etc.? Do the action scenes make sense? Does, do things move well? Do people, does, do, will people actually understand what's going on? And there's a lot of other things that go into that as well. These aren't, this, it is not limited to the things I'm pointing out right now. It's just an example so you can get your mind working. And that's going to help you a lot because you might not be able to deal with the plot and the dialogue and the characters and the action scenes all in one go. But if you decide, huh, I'm just going to work on the plot. I'm going to get through the whole book. I'm going to work on the plot and I'm going to move to the next thing. Then you've got the plot out of the way. You've got the plot the way you want it. And you might find it to be the case that you need to add an extra character. You might need to change other characters' dialogue. You might need to change how characters act in the world. And that's perfectly fine. Uh, I encourage you to find the biggest thing to deal with first. That's why I say plot first, because I think plot is one of the biggest things, and everything kind of falls into place after that. So I encourage you fi to find the thing that's going to move the most pieces first, and then work your way down to the thing that's going to move the least pieces. Uh, so again, this requires you to go over the book again and again and again, but it's actually uh, I have a bit of encouragement as well. The more you do this, the better you get at it. So instead of having to go over your book again and again and again if you don't want to, you're going to get to a point where you practice so much so you know how everything moves so you don't have to go over it 10 times to get every single piece. Your brain will get used to doing this. You're going to get used to going through a book and writing and putting things together so you'll be able to do it quicker. You're going to be able to do more things at once. If you enjoyed this podcast and you want to support me, there's really one simple thing you can do. You can go to danielpoppy.com forward slash newsletter and sign up for my newsletter. And when you sign up, you'll actually be able to get access to my publication roadmap. So that's everything I have planned for pretty much every project I have into the next decade. Again, that is danielpoppy.com forward slash newsletter. You can also find the link below.